Oh, Jesus. All right, what is going on, guys? So, I have the motor over there. I actually got a complaint from my last video, and apparently, I was too shaky on showing you guys the motor and everything, so I'm gonna pull it back out again and show you guys. Um, I actually got my flashlight again and shined it in the cylinder walls, and there was scratches under the rust. I actually got this rag right here uh, and started kind of just cleaning off the inside of the cylinder walls, and sure enough, I actually did see scratches. Hopefully, they're not too deep. Uh, nothing a little own can do and I'm um, probably gonna get the block hot tanked I don't know if I'm saying the right thing or just cleaned at least um, Because there's a lot of grime dirt and nasty stuff on it whenever you touch it your hands pretty much turn black So that's not cool. I need my block to be nice and clean or short block so nobody gets uh, Mad here, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out right now uh, so there's gonna be a lot of videos before I even start doing stuff because there's just so much that goes into building an engine. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, and for your first time doing it on your own, or at least most of it on your own, it can be a little intimidating. Uh, and it, it's not as bad as you would think. You just gotta do your research, do your homework, just like you would do with you know a test at school. So um, except this is you know actually fun. So. I kind of gathered a list here for you and I'm just going to use engine shots as b-roll so you guys can stay entertained here and just look at all the, all the features of what I got on the block. Uh, so I want to try to keep this around $2,500. That is the gold price because if I can get it to about 170 wheel horsepower, you figure to the crank, add 15% of that, that gives you about 195 horsepower which is equivalent to the horsepower output of the B18 and C5 so don't quote me on that I, I that's just what I've read 15% uh, drivetrain loss uh, from the crank to the wheels so if I can get 170 under $2,500 that's that's awesome that's great so starting things off we had the GSR block that was $220 like I said last video if you didn't catch that um, on eBay right now, there's a GSR crank for about $100, which I'm probably going to win. It's actually a little cheaper than that. It's like $70, but it's an auction and it ends tomorrow. So I'll probably be buying that as well. Um, and again, I'm going to get GSR pistons. They're right now on uh, eBay for about $100 and I just offer the guy $90. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and if you guys don't know now, I'm going to be sticking with a stock bottom end and a built head and it's going to be ported and polished because you need all the ponies that you can get out of this engine so 170 horsepower with just a built head and a stock bottom end with a b16 transmission that's kind of like what i'm going for and the reason why i chose b16 is because it's a little cheaper than the actual type r motor because everybody knows type r parts are way overpriced so next on the list i have a cosmetic a head gasket with ARP rod studs. Um, after that I had just a timing belt water pump from eBay, I believe it was Gates, it is the popular uh, distributor or the popular part manufacturer of the timing belt water pump kit on eBay, so everybody says good things about that. Then I have Skunk 2 cams and retainers and springs. Now I'm probably going to just get the Skunk 2 cams and get Supertech steel retainers and valve springs and the reason for that is because everybody knows titanium retainers and valve springs wear out over time and I believe they wear out about 30 to 50 thousand miles because they're only really meant for race engines so I really don't want to put that in my car I want to have stock-ish internals uh, for the most part at least because you know reliability is key when building a car that you drive every day um, so I'm going to try to find that for a better deal and then I have a Skunk 2 intake manifold. I kind of want to have just everything Skunk 2. Uh, there's no really reason for that. There's really no reason for that. I just figured Skunk 2 makes some pretty pretty good products. And uh, you know, I already have a shift knob by them, so why not just get everything that I find useful from them. Uh, next up I have the AEM fuel rail and some, and some ACL bearings. Uh, then next I have a GSR head, which I didn't get yet. But I figured, you know, for a great price, I could probably get a GSR head for around $300. And hopefully I can get that pretty much complete, uh, if not partially complete. Next I have uh, piston rings, 
for my GSR pistons. I'm probably going to swap those out and the reason for that is because you don't want to have used piston rings and just drop that in a brand a brand new, you know, engine. It's just not a smart idea. You want to get all brand new parts and all new bearings that way nothing gets worn out faster than something else does and you have to take the whole engine apart and replace that one part so everything in the bottom end is pretty much going to be replaced with brand new stuff that way I don't have to worry about it for years to come uh, next up I have skunk 2 header now this is debatable I don't know if I'm really going to get this yet or the intake manifold um, uh, this is the bolt-ons is kind of uh, up in the air so anything that I say that's a bolt-on to the actual engine itself is not 100% finalized, but everything else that I pretty much said is already finalized. Um, next I have a Moroso, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Moroso 4 point uh, or 4 quart oil pan. And um, one of you guys actually recommended that I get that and it was about $190 so I, I can't really complain and I can't really find any GSR oil pans. Um, on eBay that are OEM so I was just like you know what let me just get a, a Moroso four quart oil pan and call it a day and get a oil pan gasket for that too now injectors I know nothing about I still to this day don't even know what injectors do um, if you ask me I'd probably just look at you with a blank face and say you know I don't know what that does but I know it's on the car you know so that's up in the air um, if you guys want to, you know, teach me something, that'd be great. Uh, then tell me what in, what injectors do. I'm sure I could look it up on Google, but you know, it is what it is. Next, I have a clutch and flywheel. Now, I want to get a lightweight flywheel with the XD Stage One clutch. Nothing extreme. This is only a 170 to 200 horsepower car. There's no need for like a Stage Three, two or four puck clutch. You know, that's not necessary. It's gonna suck every day. And considering I deliver pizzas, that get really annoying after a while. Next, I have the transmission, which I already said it was a B16 transmission. Very short, nice and tight, the way I like it. Um, and that's pretty much all I have here on this piece of paper right here that I pretty much memorized. So that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was interesting to watch at least. And uh, I will see you on Friday. Right.